Okay. Is this going to come up? Let's have a look. Oh, let's change it again. All right, we finished number six last week. I'll move that up a little bit. So number seven's a nice short one. Who wants to do that one? I'll do it. Hey, Carly. <laughs> okay. You are not asked to make insane decisions, although you can think you are. It must, however, be insane to believe that it is up to you to decide what God's creations are. The Holy Spirit perceives the conflict exactly as it is. Therefore, his second lesson is to have peace, teach peace, to learn it. I love that. It's insane yes, to believe it's it's it. to decide what God's creations are. <laughs> so I don't get to decide, you know, from what's good or bad. It doesn't matter. You can take two people standing next to each other and they're both God's creations. So no decision to be made. I love it. Anything else to be discussed on this one? Oh, it's pretty clear to me. Yep. Perfect. Gary, I'll go you ahead read and read number eight? Oh, sorry. Yeah. I'll... Uh, this is still a preliminary step. Since having and being are still not equated, it is, however, more advanced than the first step, which is really only the beginning of the thought reversal. The second step is a positive affirmation of what you want. This, then, is a step in the direction out of conflict, since it means that alternatives have been considered. And what has been chosen as more desirable. Nevertheless, the term more desirable still implies that the desirable has degrees. Therefore, although this step is essential for the ultimate decision, it is clearly not the final one. Lack of order of difficulty in miracles has not yet been accepted because nothing is difficult that is wholly desired. Uh, to desire wholly is to create and creating cannot be difficult if God himself created you as a creator. I love that. Has that come up before or did you or did you preempt that, Gary, to desire holy? I did not preempt it. No, I thought yeah. it was really weird that I, that I read that one. Because that was the thing I was I was that was the thing I was focused on. So yes. interesting. It's a divine yeah. In instant. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I'm kind of getting it. I have to I have to write that down. Because <laughs> that's that's really good. Can I just confirm that the so the second lesson is to have peace teach peace to learn it? Is the first lesson to have give all to all? I is think so. I'm gonna get the book. So that's the first lesson. Yeah, I think so. It would take me a while to find in the book. Yeah, I haven't been looking into the book. So, um, because I'd like to find out the page number that this is on as well. Oh, here we go. It's just fallen open. How, how easy is that? <laughs> wow. <laughs> it's on page 108, Gary. Okay. Very auspicious number, 108. Yeah. <laughs> and that is actually number eight. That's... You know, paragraph number eight as well on page 108. 
And yes, the first one is to have give all to all. Okay. Beautiful. It's all falling into place. Do we need to dissect that one anymore? No, it's pretty we clear. Kind of did that, you know, discussions earlier. So I'm going to talk, uh, I'm just going to mention to the people who might be listening to this afterwards that because we've had our little discussion on how we've gone for the week, which have been very powerful, that's why these um, recordings are ending up so short because we're spending so much time delving into it and actually embodying the lessons that um, you just need to come join us if you want to find out what all that was about. <laughs> <laughs> Shall we move on to number nine then? Yeah. All right, I'll read that one. The second step then is still perceptual, although it is a giant step toward the unified perception that reflects God's knowing. As you take this step and hold this direction, you will be pushing toward the center of your thought system where the fundamental change will occur. At the second step, progress is intermittent. But the second step is easier than the first because it follows. Realising that it must follow is a demonstration of a growing awareness that the Holy Spirit will lead you on. Linda, can you uh, turn off your mute your mic because there's a lot of noise coming through. Sorry, thank I thought you. I had muted it. No, thank you, though. I'd love to hear you rustling in, in the leaves, but probably not. <laughs> No worries. Sorry. Sorry about that. So has the second step seemed easier than the first? Hmm. I'm not sure that it has. To have peace, so. teach people to learn it. So the first lesson is is to give all to all. Yes. The second lesson is to have peace, teach peace to learn it, to learn it. Okay. Now we're coming to the third one, be vigilant only for God and his kingdom. Who wants to read that one? i read it. We said before that the Holy Spirit is evaluative and must be. He sorts out the true from the false in your mind and teaches you to judge every thought you allow to enter it in the light of what God put there. Whatever is in accord with this light, he retains to strengthen the kingdom in you. What is partly in accord with it, he accepts and purifies. But what is out of accord entirely, he rejects by judging against. This is how he keeps the kingdom perfectly consistent and perfectly unified. Remember, however, that what the Holy Spirit rejects, the ego accepts. This is because they are in fundamental disagreement about everything. Being in fundamental disagreement about what you are. The ego's beliefs on this crucial issue vary. And that is why it promotes different moods. The Holy Spirit never varies on this point. And so the one mood he engenders is joy. He protects it by rejecting everything that does not foster joy. And so he alone can keep you wholly joyous.
Jane, was it you that said um, that beautiful quote, um, every rejection is God's protection? Mm -mm. No, but I like that. I yeah. like it. I came across that recently. I can't remember who said it, but it really stuck with me and it just jumped out that from that part, what the Holy Spirit rejects, the ego accepts, um, sort of another way of saying every rejection is God's protection. Yeah, I like that. I'm just writing that down. Mm. No, but when you find that person, bring them in. <laughs> no, I know. <laughs> I think it was it was a, it was one of the members, the participants in one of my classes. I think. Okay. Yeah. No, that's that's gold. That statement. What's that? That is gold. That it's statement. It's absolute gold. Every rejection is God's protection. Yeah. That would apply to you, Gary, right now with with your I... rejections that you are experiencing. Yeah, that's that's what I'm uh, I'm thinking. You know, it's yeah. like it really is God's God's protection because I don't really know who these people are. Yeah, and and Robert would say, "Be careful, be careful, Gary." <laughs> you know what I'm yeah, say. I mean, you you don't really want to get involved with someone who's not going to show up to a meeting. You know, that's not your type of person. <laughs> oh, and it's not going to value me enough to you know keep the word and follow a course of, you know, rolling out what was said before and creating the strategy to do it. And I was like, I just end up feeling, you know, not valued. And so there's just I, no integrity there. No, I don't, I don't need to play in that arena. So I'm not. But just think of how you probably help that person to see themselves. Yeah. They have to, they, they're the ones that have to live with that. I know. I would. I would. Unless would never I'm sorry. Go ahead. I was just gonna say I would never stand up someone and not communicate. Yeah. You know, because you know, because he didn't communicate at all, and we had been in communication this morning, and um, you know, he accepted the invite and he just didn't show up, and so I find that odd, very odd, <clears throat> but telling. Mm -hmm probably good it's yeah. probably better now than later <laughs> yeah i'm no kidding that's it yeah who wants to read number two i'll read it Good the holy the holy spirit does not teach you to judge others because he does not want you to teach error and learn it yourself he would hardly be consistent if he allowed you to strengthen what you must learn to avoid in the mind of the thinker then he is judgmental but only in order to unify the mind so it can perceive without judgment. This enables the mind to teach without judgment and therefore to learn to be without judgment. The undoing is necessary only in your mind so that you will not project instead of extend. God himself has established what you can extend with perfect safety. Therefore, the Holy Spirit's third lesson is be vigilant only for God and his kingdom. It's fascinating how we've been learning about um, teaching to learn. You know, I've heard that a lot, but because we, we keep coming back to that 
it's it's kind of sinking in a little bit deeper each time and how what how we actually show up is how we are teaching people how to how to treat us and how we see ourselves so we're constantly yeah. teaching and learning from each other I think this is why it's so important to have sort of a, a spiritual community around you because <clears throat> we all are, I mean, sometimes I feel like a, a baby in diapers, you know, I'm still learning about myself. I'm learning about how to operate in the world. I have different iterations of things that I'm like, oh God, that is like so embarrassing to admit that about myself. <laughs> and, and yet, um, it's also really exciting to see things I've never seen before. And I think, um, you know, this this whole issue of, of judgment is such a huge one. Because I don't know about you guys, but, you know, I watch myself periodically. I think I'm judging that and I'm judging that. And it's almost like it's this endless cycle of judging between good and bad, evaluating, you know, right and wrong, good and bad. And... It's all, it's all like for naught because it really does create division. You know, in in the U.S., you know, Trump just got immunity uh, from the from the Supreme Court, which is the last vestige of sanity in the United States, and they've become corrupted. And so you, you look at it and you go, "Oh my God!" And judge, 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 and I'm like, "Okay, if it's happening, it's got to be in God's will." It has to be God's will. If it's happening and it's rolling out the way it's rolling out, there's obviously things that are going to have to be gone through and learned based upon how the karma is just unfolding. And I sat back and I thought, okay, I'm good. You know, I can roll yeah. with it. I can stop judging it. I can stop condemning it and thinking the whole world's going to implode. Um, I don't think it will. I think it will get... I think it will be get interesting, that's for sure. And I mm -hmm. think the country will learn, the world will learn, and autocracy may take hold for a period of time. And then people go, oh, hell no. And then maybe democracy and the rights of everyone will increase in the vehemency to assist and be kind to one another, maybe. But even if it doesn't, it's like it still has to be perfect in my mind. Because I'm one person, I can't do that. I can help people with certain mindset skills. But, you know, mm -hmm. if this is what is to unfold, it's what is to unfold. And I get to bless it and call it good, not knowing what the overall long-term consequences are. That's progress. Oh, yeah. <laughs> on a that side is... note, and on the topic as well of A Course in Miracles, did you see, um, if anyone's following Marianne Williamson on, on Instagram, she did a post, um, I think, in the last little bit, maybe day or so. I'm not sure when the post was. But she's stepping up to run for... Um, Jane, you are you following this over there? Are you hearing much about Marianne Williamson's? Statement? Yeah, yeah. As a matter of fact, I just uh, two days ago she had a um, a recording, uh, which I've saved. I mean, it's like right here. Talk about divinity, and um, yeah, I listened to like maybe a half to three quarters of it, and. Um, it was wonderful. It was, it was, it was really wonderful. It was just on, um, you know, knowing that, uh, we're not separate, you know, uh, she, the whole theme was about, uh, we're, we're together and, but she talked about, you know, the wounds and, and so on. And, and, uh, yeah. So, but I didn't hear that she was running, yeah, so, I, I mean, do take a moment when you can just hop onto her Instagram and have a look at her latest little video that she shared because um, it sounds like she's stepping up. I, I, I don't understand how it all works over there, um, but it sounds like she's actually stepping up to the mark to possibly go into the running. I'm, I'm not sure, um, but it sounds promising anyway. Well, I... Yeah, I didn't. I that's that's very interesting. I didn't finish it, and maybe that's the part I've missed because it's it's up here. I've got it saved um, at that part of my computer in the upper left hand side. So <laughs> there's no accidents, right? 
<laughs> Thank you. Shall we try and squeeze one more in before um, we have to call it a yeah. day already? Sure. So, um, Carly, do you want to read number three? Sure. This is a major step forward. Oh, this is a major step toward fundamental change. Yet it still has an aspect of thought reversal. Since it implies that there is something you must be vigilant against. It has advanced far from the first lesson, which is merely the beginning of the thought reversal. And also from the second, which is essentially the identification of what is more desirable. This step, which follows from the second, as the second follows from the first, emphasizes the dichotomy between the desirable and the undesirable. It therefore makes the ultimate choice inevitable. Well, considering what a what we went through from the last week's lessons, this one's going to be interesting. If it's saying this is another major step, another a major step toward fundamental change, to be vigilant only for God and His kingdom. I do like that. Now my computer's covered with post-its. <laughs> Mm. Well, after reading that, I do want to hear what everyone's um, takeaway will be for us to touch base on next week. Mine is be wholly joyous. Hmm. That's sweet. And I'm going to I'm going to use Jane's um, uh, what Jane's experience with like triggers. Just welcome, <laughs> welcome. <laughs> what have we got to learn here? Goody, what have I got here? <laughs> I love I that. Yeah. That's a beautiful approach. <laughs> Anyone else ready for their takeaway? Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna say I'm I'm teaching myself peace first. I think mm -hmm. that yeah, I'm teaching myself peace first. Nice. I'll, I'll go for it. I'm going to be very greedy tonight. I'm going to read three that I'm going to focus on this coming week. <laughs> one is, of course, to desire holy is to create. And then the second one is every rejection is God's protection. And I'm going to cap it off like a cherry on a banana split. Be vigilant only for God and his kingdom. Well, so that's you set the bar high. <laughs> it's good stuff. Yeah. Yeah, it is. So now have you got yours? Not yet. I'm just I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna simplify it. I'm gonna just go teaching to learn. Teaching mm -hmm. to learn. Yeah. Yeah. Linda, you're not muted. Do you have one? Yes. Sorry, yes. Um, Self-care is self-love. Absolutely. Thank you. Coralie? I'm going to take Gary's one from last week. Nothing is difficult that is wholly desired. <laughs> That's a beautiful one. And I don't think Carly can talk. So um, she might message us later with hers. All right. I, I just have to announce uh, Marianne Williamson has put her, thrown her hat in the ring for presidential. Uh, yes. 
part. Yeah. yeah. Seven, seven hours ago, um, yes. she said, I, I want Biden to step down. Yeah. And um, I am, I'm throwing my hat in the ring and uh, yeah. Wow. Thank you for letting me know, letting us know. Yeah. I posted on her um, Instagram comments this morning. Um, I just put hashtag miracles. <laughs> <laughs> Our miracle of miracles. <laughs> I mean, that would, that would be, oh my, can you imagine? Yeah. Oh, can you imagine? Oh, <laughs> We can only hope and pray. Yeah. I'd, cool I'd get down on my knees every day. Maybe that's what I'll do. Yeah. Okay. That's what I'm going to do. <laughs> you know, Jane, a better, a better prayer is give me the strength, the courage, and the insight to accept your will. Mm. 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 Absolutely. Beautiful. We'll find yeah. better people. That way, I think. Yeah, absolutely. God Thanks, bless everybody. You. Yeah, God bless everybody. I Take can't wait everyone. to see how we all go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Bye. <laughs>